I think one has to keep that in mind as well. But I can say one thing safely, Prashant, yeah. that once their observations for the Goa facility, uh, that overhang is removed or there's clarity about the March 2016 observations, there's possibly going to be a re rating. You know, I was surprised because I thought there was clarity and the stock did not move after that, I right? Mean, they got an initial clarity. approval. Ho hum clarity. It's tentative approval. You'd like not to a see final approval. Yeah. You'd want to see an EIR for the March 2016 observations. But getting back to our guest, we have Prakash Divan uh, joining in as well. Uh, Prakash, your sense in terms of the numbers, too many moving parts going forward, um, pricing pressure in the US, NLEM, FTC uncertainty in the domestic markets. So too much to work with uh, without any certainty in terms of uh, you know foreseeable future. Exactly. So, uh, you know, Lupin is characteristically driven post the numbers, post the earnings after the management commentary comes in because, uh, you know, you, you would need to have, hear some voices from the management in terms of putting a method to the madness. Uh, and, and had Lupin come probably before Dr. Reddy's, things would have looked very different. But the pressure that Dr. Reddy's has kind of had a rub-off effect on most uh, of the players who are strong in the U.S., is kind of showing on Lupin and you know like another thing that's, hap that's happening to Lupin is quarter on quarter we are you know the expectations are growing from this counter uh, every day and mm. that becomes difficult to live up to in, in you know at some stage you kind of see the stock giving in the company's business also stabilizing at or you know finding some equilibrium now the next quarter could probably seem very promising Given the fact that, you know, this quarter has not seen any blockbuster drugs contributing, so you could probably have some sort of an effect uh, coming into the next quarter and the management could probably sound uh, us on that. And the R&D cost is something which will start having an impact after a year. So if you were to look at Lupin, it gets into value territory now. Uh, given the you know earlier levels of 27 times at its peak, uh, the P multiples that it used to trade on, now that it's you know under 20, things would start coming into value territory zone if the management guidance is uh, benign enough, if there's nothing negative about it. So I I think while optically it meets most of the criteria, the operating the other income is is where you know people don't like that huge number contributing to rather than leverage coming operating leverage uh, being the real contributor. So those are those are some internals which people would uh, but I'm I'm pretty impressed by the margin uh, this thing also uh, I'm impressed in the sense uh, the impact that the margin picture is creating on Lupin so margins are if they are not going to be contributed from rest of the world markets from the US market significantly then also you know the stock will kind of languish a bit so decent level for people to evaluate it but I don't see it coming off uh, in a significant way from these earnings it could probably only move off if the management commentary is positive Ika, do you think this trade in any way is worried about pricing pressure in the US? Because Dr. Reddy's commentary suggested that. So, um, do you think this margin miss by Lupin is being read that perhaps in the most important market, US, we are going to see, you know, some pricing pressure? Um, going forward, yes. Going forward, going yes. Going forward, yes. These margins are just based on, I think, what uh, uh, has happened One with Lumetsa sales plus uh, with regards to maybe higher R&D costs. Pricing pressure is faced across the board. How you differentiate yourself in terms of earth Has it intensified? Of course. I mean, that's yeah. the biggest problem that uh, most pharma companies are facing right now is the pricing pressure because there are many more companies which have become more efficient in terms of launching the same particular drug. So you have ha many more competitors selling the same generic version of a particular drug so that is a key point but uh, let's just get one quick comment from Mayuresh Joshi as well uh, Mayuresh your quick take on uh, Lupin and would you buy the stock so again the top line has exceeded our expectations the margins have been under pressure so one really needs to understand whether it's the increase in the R&D spend or uh, some other factors which have probably led to the decline in margins uh, okay. but again I think if you go by the last quarter's guidance that the management has okay, given I just uh, want to interrupt you uh, Mayuresh because now we've got the press release uh, US formulation sales have increased 78.9% to 322 million dollars so that's a positive and that was expected Japan sales have increased around 30 one odd percent this time round so that too is a positive which has come in uh, investment for research for the quarter was 11.6 percent of net sales which is around 499.4 crores so you can get a sense that they've maintained it at the similar levels in the previous quarter and despite glumetsa um, you know they've managed to uh, they've managed to not exceed those 30 percent
percent margins which have come through. So material costs have been down by around to by uh, to around 29.5 percent in terms of sales. So overall, yes, R&D expenditure has gone up to around 12 percent of net sales as compared to same quarter last year, but similar on a sequential basis. So uh, that's the update coming in on Lupin. But um, Mayuris, just a quick last word then. Uh, so again, yes, uh, the, the A&D approval is uh, quite strong for FI17. They are expecting 25, 30 launches probably to come through. Mm. As for the last quarter's call, 15 from Gavis, 15 from Lupin, they're expecting two FTFs. R&D is still expected to be in those higher 12, 15% bands. And though I think the margins will uh, moderate going forward, our own expectations of margins staying between 26 and a half to 27% is, is on the cards for the greater part of the next couple of years. So I think a large... Uh, portion of Lupin's performance will be how the branded generic business specifically in the U.S. market sure. performs. Uh, so again, I think one really needs to understand the fine print to understand the greater details. Okay, guys, you'll have other numbers to take over from now. <laughs> Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, these are numbers which have come in from Apollo Tires. 315 crore is what the company has delivered by way of its profits. Uh, once again, just to reiterate, all the numbers this quarter are getting restated account to, on account of end AS. So it's not a fair comparison to only peg it against the poll. Um, we'll just try and get what the versus figure is. I think it's 315, which compares with 